The sun rises over the ocean as salt air fills your lungs and the warm sun touches your skin. You slip on your worn out boots and favorite jean shorts and pair it with an eyelet top from a local boutique to head out to the local horse shelter you volunteer at. Working with these giant animals, gaining their trust, allows for a spiritual connection that is hard to find. You imagine them running free down the coast, hooves picking up sand with every step, white foam ocean spray crashes as they gallop along the coast. You meet up with your friends at the beach for some surfing and tanning, hop on your bikes to a local ice cream shop for a sweet treat after a long hot day in the sun, and finish off making fresh pesto with the herbs in your garden and cook a meal with your friends as the sun goes down. The wine flows, you sit on your porch as the summer's afternoon thunderstorm arrives, the warmth from your sunburn still tingling on your face. The soft linen sheets encompass you as you drift to sleep to the sound of waves and await for another day in paradise. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dion, and today we are gonna be discussing the coastal cowgirl aesthetic. There's hair in my mouth. This aesthetic is definitely going to be the, the number one in 2023. I feel like the battle between Siren Core and Coastal Cowgirl for this year's summer 2023 trend. I don't know, after Coachella and the Eras Tour outfits, I feel like Coastal Cowgirl has won. We've seen a lot of like Coachella Cowgirl like outfits lately from the past two weekends. And with the Eras Tour, everyone's breaking out their boots and stuff like that. I just feel like we are in sort of a Western country summer, which let me just say, did I or did I not say in my 2023 trend predictions that we were gonna be moving back out West to LA? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And especially with the show Daisy Jones and the Six coming out, which is very like 70s California vibes. I feel like just everything is very boho chic right now. I'm getting flashbacks to 2010. This feels like a step up from Coastal Grandmother, like a little bit more fun, a little bit more whimsical, but still keeping like neutral enough for people who are kind of boring and, and neutral in their style um, to make it like super accessible. And then you can also colorful it up for the fun people. So if you like niche fashion aesthetics and learning how to play with them in your own closet. Definitely subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Thursday. And with that, let's get into it. So the breakdown of the Coastal Cowgirl aesthetic. For colors, we're looking at pale blues, seafoam green, sunset colors like light pinks, oranges, grass green, natural beiges, creams, whites, brown, very natural earthy colors. I feel like it's a lot of the opalescence and iridescence that you would see in like Siren Core like those sort of colors. It's not as bright and saturated as like Coconut Girl, which in summer of 2021, that was like the big aesthetic. That was like very, very colorful and like my personal favorite aesthetic. Coastal Cowgirl, I feel like takes a little bit from that in the color scheme. It's not as blue and white like Coastal Grandmother is from last year, which I just found very, very boring. I do have a video on both Key West Kitten slash Coconut Girl and Coastal Grandmother, so. Go check those out. But yeah, I just feel like this is a little bit more fun, a little bit more whimsical. It has a little bit more color into it. In terms of like icons of the aesthetic or when I think of like movies and TV shows, like I said, Daisy Jones and the Six. I also think like early Taylor Swift music videos, like the Mine music video or Teardrops on My Guitar, I feel like was very much like that music video. Very much encompassed it. Hannah Montana movie, I think definitely gives some Coastal Cowgirl vibes. And the movie, The Last Song, also with Miley Cyrus, I think really, really gives Coastal Cowgirl vibes. Nicholas Sparks, who wrote the book, The Last Song and produced the movie and whatever, all of his books and movies basically take place on the Southern East Coast. So North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, etc. So I feel like in general, Coastal Cowgirl aesthetics is definitely Nicholas Sparks movies and that kind of vibe. Also the show, The Outer Banks, which takes place on the coast of North Carolina. And what's so funny is that Maria, who you guys have seen on the channel, she's from The Outer Banks and her two best friends, Anna and Kaylee growing up, they rode horses and I believe Kaylee still works with, maybe Anna, I can't, I can't remember which one still works with horses, but they literally like live on the beach, wear cowgirl hats, wear cowgirl boots, work with horses, surf, like they are 
OG Coastal Cowgirls. I know two real life Coastal Cowgirls. I feel very blessed. Likes of the Coastal Cowgirl are animals, surfing, biking, gardening, building fires. Very like naturalist, I feel like. It's just sort of low key. It's a little bit slow. It's, again, it's not as boring as Coastal Grandmother. Like the Coastal Grandmother activities are like gardening, watching Ina garden, garden cooking, like that kind of thing. This is a little bit more fun, a little bit more youthful but it still has that slow summer vibe, which is nice. Coastal Cowgirls hang out obviously by the ocean, in the water, on the boardwalk, by some stables or a nearby pasture. Again, in places like North Carolina, South Carolina, there are like horse pastures um, along the coast and I'm sure in California as well. And I rode horses for 10 years and I'm from Miami Beach. So I'm like, I'm a coastal cowgirl technically, even though Miami is quite a big city and not very coastal cowgirl in aesthetic. I am a, a true coastal cowgirl, which is nice. I feel like they're, the coastal cowgirl activities, if you wanna have a, a coastal cowgirl weekend, it is just a lot of like being on the boardwalk, being on the beach, hanging out with some animals, going on bike rides, just like slow, no cars. And the occupations of coastal cowgirls are obviously being cowgirls. So volunteering or working at horse stables and shelters. I feel like coastal cowgirls, lifeguard and our camp counselors as well. Again, summer jobs where you're outside, maybe a surf instructor, those kind of things. Yeah, just very summery, very youthful. Um, I feel like coastal cowgirls are quite active as well. Not afraid to get their hands dirty, not afraid to just have a little fun, let a little bit loose, that kind of thing. It's not so prim and proper like the coastal grandmother was. The essentials for a Coastal Cowgirl outfit are white dresses. I saw, I feel like the classic uniform are boots and white dresses, which if you grew up in the South is like every sorority girl's outfit, such a classic. But to be fair, you can't go wrong with the white dress and cowgirl boots. You can't go wrong with the sundress and cowgirl boots in general. That's like one of my favorite outfits. It's so whimsical, so fun. I just feel like cowgirl boots add a, a whimsy and a fun to an outfit. So if you're wearing something like a dress and you wanna dress it down, cowgirl boots will just add a non-serious aspect to the outfit. I think in general, outside this aesthetic, that's just my personal opinion. So white dresses, of course, a lot of denim. Jorts, jorts are part of the coastal cowgirl aesthetic. You guys are just gonna have to deal with it. Jean shorts, cut off jean shorts, that is this aesthetic. It's jorts summer 2023. I love it. Just denim in general, denim skirts. We've seen a lot of long denim maxi skirts be popular um, this past year. And I think they're gonna be even more popular this summer. I think cow print, just obviously coastal cowgirl, but cow print was very prop popular in 2020 in the early parts of the pandemic. And I think it's another way to add a little whimsy, a little fun. I don't think it's as tacky as let's say a cheetah or a zebra print um, for clothing. I'm just not really a big fan of either of those as clothing patterns, but it's still an animal print, which is a little bit fun and tacky in a good way. So I definitely think cow print, fringe, obviously, I think the coastal cowgirl takes a lot of notes from um, like the 90s and the 70s. So in the 90s, there was like a 70s revival. So it's like 70s by way of the 90s, by way of 2023, which is basically like Daisy Jones and the Six kind of vibes. A lot of fringe maxi skirts, like boho print. It's definitely reminiscent of the 2010s boho chic, which is 20 years after the 90s. Trends go into a 20 year trend trend cycle. So if you think 70s, Western, Prairie, Boho, Americana vibe, 20 years later, 90s, we get sort of the Destiny's Child, um, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, Canadian tuxedo iteration of Western and like sort of like more bling Western culture. I think Rock of Love, um, the reality show, like the girls on there. And then 20 years later in the 2010s, we have Coachella, boho, hipster, fringe, uh, Native American appropriation, Lana Del Rey kind of vibe. We're getting more, we're kind of having a new iteration of 
70s Western, but it's even more detached. So it's not as colorful, it's not as maximalist. It's a little bit more minimalist, which is very 2023, I think, but still has a lot of the same elements, including like crochet tops. I think crochet has been so, so big, maybe just on my TikTok and For You page, because I like to crochet. But I think in general, during the pandemic, people learned how to crochet. So shrugs, crochet tops, crochet skirts, crochet cover-ups. I think crochet is gonna be a really big part of the coastal cowgirl aesthetic in the summer. And then lots of like linen and muslin fabric. So lightweight, summery, cotton fabrics, especially in white, cream, etc. And then leather, whether it's faux leather or real leather, but lots of natural fabrics in the coastal cowgirl aesthetic. Think about working at stables, think about working, you know, being outside, being sunburnt. You don't want nasty uh, polyester fabrics on you. So you want cotton, linen, denim, muslin, like these sorts of fabrics that feel good if you're working outside. And then think horses, so leather, denim, boots, that kind of thing. Speaking of which, for shoes in the coastal cowgirl aesthetic, obviously cowgirl boots. Specifically, I would say like neutral, so white, cream, black, brown. But I think if you are someone that's more colorful and fun and whimsy, you can definitely do coastal cowgirl in a more saturated, um, colorful way, which is what I would do. I like the more colorful side of coastal cowgirl. I feel like you can go more coastal grandmother vibes, so, Sticking with blue and white, a little bit more simple, a little bit more linen, muslin, that kind of vibe. Or you can go Coconut Girl meets Coastal Cowgirl, which is like still wearing floral tropical prints, still having neon colors, um, more puka shell necklaces kind of thing mixed with cowboy hat, etc. So you can kind of do two sides of it. If you don't have any cowgirl boots in any color, I think like some 70s clogs, so like leather clogs, leather sandals in general, espadrilles, again, sticking with natural um, materials and natural textures just to kind of keep in the aesthetic and vibe. And then accessories of the Costa Cowgirl, obviously cowgirl hats. Something I really love about this aesthetic is people have been DIYing cowgirl hats. So getting, it's specifically the woven ones, not like the Stetson thick ones, but the woven, um, more beachy, breathable cowgirl hats. And then doing like beaded um, rimming around it. So getting some little flower beads or puka shells or something to add a little fun coastal aspect to it. I definitely want to get a cowgirl hat this summer. I did have one. But I don't know where it is anymore. I had a cowgirl hat that was like woven. I have no idea where it is. I am moving literally tomorrow. So that's probably why I can't find it. Yeah, cowgirl hats, especially that are like adorned. Turquoise jewelry, a lot of oxidized silver. I mean, gold will never go out of style, but I think like turquoise and an oxidized silver is very coastal cowgirl, very Western in general. And then, like I said, a lot of shell jewelry, a lot of DIY beaded jewelry, having that fun aspect from like Coconut Girl, QS Kitten, Visco, Visco Girl of like doing the beaded bracelets and stuff like that, but putting it on your hat. Um, and then more like Western oxidized layering, bolo ties, fringe, cool turquoise belt buckles, like all, all of that kind of thing. So some criticisms of the Coastal Cowgirl aesthetic, I've kind of mentioned a few things. It does seem like it's boho chic repackaged. It's very Coachella, which means like is cultural appropriation on the way, is like fast fashion on the way. I think there's a really cool way to do the Coastal Cowgirl aesthetic that is very thrifty and very secondhand because these styles are very secondhand. I just don't really see why you would need to buy anything new for the Coastal Cowgirl aesthetic, except maybe cowgirl boots if you don't have them. But all of these things are kind of outdated. You, they're remnants from 2010, from the early 90s, from the 70s. So I'm just sort of like, why would you need to buy anything new? That doesn't mean people won't. People definitely will. Definitely seems very like we're going back to that like cow skull flower crown vibe, which is interesting, especially because Coachella flopped so hard this year. And some other criticisms is that it is a very new aesthetic, but it was a lot of blonde girls. And I find like I follow a lot of POC creators and I find especially when black creators dress cottage core or farm core or if black creators homestead, farm, ride horses, do anything that's associated with 
farm life or country life, people are so quick to say very racist things in the comments. Obviously, so much of the roots of this aesthetic and the boho aesthetic and the Western aesthetic have roots in Native American culture. So it's very interesting how to turn it into blondes in North Carolina, riding horses, and surfing where so many of the roots of this aesthetic and the inspiration that we're getting this from are from Native Americans, caballeros, just from people of color. I do, I, I do like it because I love Western style. Again, I rode horses, so I do love cowgirl boots and cowgirl hats and Western influences. I really, really like this and I hope that everyone feels free to enjoy this aesthetic. I think there's a more fun version of Coastal Grandmother and a fun, more whimsical um, iteration of it. So with that, let's talk about getting the look. Like I said, I feel like there's sort of the Coconut Girl colorful version and then there's the Coastal Grandmother white and blues and cream version. And obviously you can combine them both, but I would sort of start with like, who, which type of Coastal Cal Girl are you kind of going for? Grab your boots and cowboy hat as a base. If you don't have any boots, grab some like leather sandals or clogs or whatever. And then are you gonna do like a white dress? Are you gonna do a colorful sundress? Are you gonna do a skirt? Are you gonna do jorts? Are you gonna do a jean skirt? So kind of decide, are you doing dress, skirt, or jean shorts? And then do like a white top or some sort of like beachy top if you want to. And then from there, you wanna add jewelry to help you skew either more coastal or more cowgirl. So if you don't have a lot of cowgirl things, get jewelry that's oxidized silver, leather, belt buckles, turquoise, those kind of things. If you're already feeling very, very Western, go for more like shell jewelry, uh, beaded jewelry, more beachy to like offset it. Basically the jewelry is gonna help you control, is the rheostat for Coastal and cowgirl. So you get to, to like decide with the jewelry that you adorn yourself with, how cowgirl you wanna go, how beachy you wanna go. And then I feel like with the makeup and everything, it's light makeup. I feel like a lot of blush in terms of a sunburn, but like mascara, tinted moisturizer, tinted sunscreen, and then like natural hair, braids, bandanas, cowgirl hat. Like you can't really do a ponytail on a cowgirl hat or like a claw clip. So yeah, just your hair down or in some braids, very casual, very beachy, very fun. I love this aesthetic. It's definitely a big inspiration for me this summer and I hope it is for you too. Let me know down below what you think of this aesthetic. Do you think it's gonna be a uh, siren core out for the 2023 summer aesthetic? I think I think it is. Who knows though? It's only May, so we, we don't know yet. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you do like these sorts of videos. I post videos every Thursday and follow me on TikTok and Instagram because I post content there almost every single day. And with that, have a happy, happy day, y'all. Bye.